Recently, the defense forces managed to destroy the third Russian ferry, the Slavyanin, in the port of Kavkaz, which the aggressor used to provide military logistics. After that, all Russian ships disappeared in the Sea of Azov. This was stated on air by the spokesman for the Ukrainian naval forces, Dmitry Pletenchuk. He stressed that the presence of Russian military ships in the Sea of Azov is currently not recorded. Previously, they could be based in Azov or periodically enter, for example, Temryuk or periodically be in the Taganrog Bay, but now they have decided to leave the waters. Pletenchuk added, they decided to leave the waters of the Sea of Azov. This was caused, of course, first of all, by the damage to the railway ferry. They took a map took a compass, drew a radius and realized that apparently it is not very safe to stay there. That is why this is the only reason and this is the only language that our enemy understands, the language of force. Pletenchuk emphasized, according to him, it is important that this is the last Russian ferry in the Azov Black Sea region. As the speaker specified, the Russians removed the Slavyanin from the Kavkaz Varna route and transferred it to ensure military logistics. That is, it was used for international transportation until the two previous railway ferries were damaged. It was used in the interests of the military logistics of the Russian Federation and was actually the only such element that connected the mainland railway with the Crimean railway. Pletenchuk said he specified that three quarters of the enemy's military logistics were accounted for by ferry transportation because they practically did not risk using the Crimean bridge for this purpose. Therefore, according to Pletenchuk, the Slavyanin was very important for the occupiers as a logistics element. This is a fairly large ferry. If it had tanks, it could take on 50 conventional wagons, the speaker added. He also spoke about the situation in the Black Sea. In the Black Sea, we are observing one submarine of the 136th project. This has become a practice of transition to a de facto presence in the Black Sea due to submarines. Before this, for quite a long time, more than a week, there were no units at all, but of course, they cannot afford to completely leave the Black Sea waters unless we are talking about surface ships, the military man said. Let us recall that on July the 23rd, the governor of the Krasnodar Krai accused Ukraine of attacking the ferry. In the evening of the same day, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported the successful destruction of the ferry Slavyanin, which the invaders used for military purposes. According to military observer Denis Popovich, the Slavyanin is a railway ferry designed to transport railway cars across the Kirsch Strait. Earlier in May, two such ferries, the Avant-Garde and the Conroe Trader, were significantly damaged. After the defeat of the Slavyanin, there are no more ferries of this class in the region. The enemy is left with only automobile ferries designed to transport automobile transport across the Kirsch Strait. Ukrainian army cut off the Black Sea route of Russia and overturned the plans regarding Crimea. Although Ukrainian forces are being pushed back in some places along the front, the country's overall military strategy is good, General Christopher Cavoli, NATO's top general, said during the Aspen Security Forum, according to Politico. The U.S. general explained that Ukrainian forces have been focused on defending their current positions in the east, denying Russia the free use of Crimea and southern Ukraine to attack the rest of Ukraine, preserving their access to the Black Sea and generating military personnel in the last several months. I think that they've got a great strategy. It is just a matter of prosecuting it. The key part is the force generation. Cavoli said, the key to success on the battlefield lies in the generation of the military force, their training and management. You have to have weapons, you have to have people, you have to train them all together. The equipment depends largely on us and I think that proceeds well, the general said. In April, the Ukrainian government obliged men 25 to 60 years of age to register with conscription offices in the country and abroad. Cavoli claimed the decision has had a positive impact on the situation with military personnel. Earlier, Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umorov said that Russia is deploying more manpower and equipment to the front. The minister stated that Russia had around 500,000 troops positioned in Ukraine and near its borders, with plans to increase this number by an additional 200,000 to 300,000. Meanwhile, Russia has used the meat grinder tactic 
in its offensive in Kharkiv Oblast. This approach proved effective in Abdiivka and Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine, but it appeared to be less successful in the Kharkiv region, as the Russians could achieve only small gains while paying a very high price. British military intelligence analysts said Russia's casualties in May were nearly 1,200 a day, the highest of the war. Russian soldiers have also confirmed on social media that their units are suffering high casualties in drone attacks and artillery shelling.